is going on everyone? So I recently returned from my uh, summer backpacking trip over to Utah. It's a really, really short trip. I only shot three subjects and I exposed five sheets of film. And it was, it was definitely a weird trip. I don't quite know what to think about it. But that being said, this is the film reveal. I got my little buddy here to help me out. This is Finley. And uh, we're gonna take a look at the film for the first time, see how it all turned out. And um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it is. Uh, but the film is in protective sleeves, so we don't have to worry about it getting messed up or anything. But uh, let's see what we got here. So this actually turned out pretty decent. Um, this is a subject that I had been hoping to photograph. This is actually the one that I went to the canyon with this in mind. Um, and it's this really cool bush set up against this wall with this really nice desert varnish. And I really liked how there is a particular area where I can stand that align the bush with this dark area. And it's surrounded by these kind of lighter areas there. Um, and there were some clouds up. I mean, in a perfect world, the best light would be if there's no clouds in the sky. You'd have even more depth of light, but this is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, I exposed two sheets of film on this and we'll see how this one compares to the other one, but uh, no light leaks. Uh, let's check the focus. I'm sure it's pretty good though. Yeah, it's really sharp. So no surprises there. Um, that's good. That's, that's really good to see. Um, see like this, I use a Siconic spot meter. And so I put my spot meter at that dark area right there, that light area there, averaged it, and that's how I got my meter reading for this scene. Um, but that's good to see. That's the third time I've tried to photograph that scene. So I'm glad I finally have at least one that turned out. And okay, so this is that same scene. Um, again, this is how it's going to be viewed here. Um, this one maybe is a hair darker. We'll compare it. Yeah, this one has, the first one has a little better lighting to it, a little more dimension to it. But it's always good to shoot doubles when possible. Now when I was on this trip, I only had six sheets of Velvia with me. Um, so I had to definitely budget each photo uh, that is also very sharp. So glad to see that turned out. That's definitely the scene I went into that canyon to to try to shoot. So so this is the cracked mud, and um, so I exposed two sheets of film on this one. I was only really going for one. Um, but the light was changing relatively fast and um, I got everything set up. I uh, calculated how much compensation I need for overextending the bellows and everything else. But then I forgot to factor that into my light meter. So basically this sheet of film is one stop darker than it should be. Though it's still okay because the scene isn't particularly challenging. It's relatively even light on the scene. So if you're a stop over or if you're a stop under, it's still within the range of what the film can handle. Um, but it's definitely a little on the underexposed side. Um, I will have a, a brighter sheet as well. But this is a tricky scene. Um, just the angle of it, the shallow depth of field of eight by 10. Um, let's see how this looks in terms of sharpness. That actually looks really good. Um, scenes like this, you can't get everything in focus. You just try to get as much as you can. Because um, this area, it was sloping kind of like this. So you have to use some front tilt and also a little bit of swing in order to move that plane of focus. And you just stop down really far. So this is at 45. But yeah, a little dark, but we'll have another one of those as well. This one. Uh, so this is definitely a better exposure. Um, it'll be interesting to scan the two to see how, how they are, but uh, this one's definitely definitely a lot, a lot better for an exposure. 
So the brightest areas are right here, darkest areas are back in there. Um, again, that's how I metered it. You meter the bright area, the dark area, you average it, you kind of look throughout the spot meter, it tells you how bright and dark all the subjects are. And this one is also very, very sharp. It's interesting because there's um, kind of warm light and cool light. And that's something that film picks up really well. It'll pick up the blues from the light from the sky. And then you have the really warm light bouncing off, in this case, some boulders that were nearby that were uh, kind of orangey in tone. So you end up having cool light coming in here, warm light coming in there, um, which, is, which is definitely interesting. I, I wasn't really thinking very much about this photo. And in some ways, when I was out there, I was really bummed I exposed two sheets of film on it. Um, but I like it. It's cool to have the curled mud, but also in an area where you have some strong reflected light and then have that reflected light be, you know, the blue light and then the, the warm light component so you get more depth to the scene. That's cool. All right, so I got one sheet left and well, this one turned out pretty cool too. So while I was hiking through the canyon, um, it's kind of a sensory overload situation in this canyon. There's so much stuff going on. Um, but I found this area in some really nice, warm, reflected light. And what caught my eye was this arch here, and then this juniper tree here. So I kind of moved through the scene to try to find a way to compose it. Now what's interesting is that when I was shooting this, I was paying most attention to this, I didn't even really notice that, the top of this arch. I was seeing it more as just this little alcove kind of area that's forming. But now that I see this, and I think it's because the lens I was using is a really slow lens. Um, so it's a pretty dim image on the ground glass. Um, but this probably could benefit if the camera was aiming up a little more, because I want some more room up on top there. And I could do with a little less down here. Um, so maybe that's a, I mean, it's fine as it is, but when you have an element pretty close to the top there, it does bug me a bit. But I think this might be just a reason for me to return to that canyon, because um, there's, some, there's some cool stuff there. The exposure is spot on. Um, on this one, I metered that is my bright area, dark area right here, average dumb. Just looked through the meter, everything was good. Let's see what we did for sharpness. Oh, yeah, it's sharp. Juniper is really sharp. And then the, the foreground is actually really good as well. I was not expecting this foreground here to be sharp, um, but it is. And I don't expect the background to be sharp, but it's actually decent. Background's a little out of focus, but that's to be expected. Because um, for me, the most important thing is really that tree. Because if that tree is not in focus, then all bets are off. But I like that. So this is interesting because I honestly didn't have a really good feeling when I was done with this trip. Um, to me, honestly, it felt like a failure because um, I just didn't have a really good feeling about the photos that I shot. But now I see that they actually all turned out decent. This one here is fine, but it gives me an excuse to go back and maybe fine tune things a little bit more. Um, so I think it goes to show that you really should um, trust your instincts somewhat in terms of you know, if something catches your eye and take time to compose it, there's, there probably is something there. So, all right. So it's good to see they turned out. Um, I'm going to have to scan these in and kind of see how they look on the computer. Um, but, uh, but definitely good to see. But I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. 
I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.